1.9 billion in lost shipping revenue. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at some information about shipping and the loss of $1.9 billion in shipping revenue due to the disruptions to global trade that has recently occurred and is still underway. Now, I recently did a video just looking at international shipping and in that video I showed some visualization from 2012 to give people an understanding of global shipping and a viewer, a viewer shared with me some information where I could get accurate up-to-date information within well live essentially or a few hours just of the global shipping so this is right at this moment you can see I'm showing uh, all the shipping around the world right now all the red are the tankers and the green are the cargo vessels and cargoes general cargo bulk carriers container are roll on roll off vehicle carriers I'm assuming reefer aggregate carriers cement all livestock OBO heavy load carriers barges inland cargo special cargo and other and then the tankers everything you'd assume oil crude chemical LPG bunker water inland special and other you can just see right now where they're all heading what's all leaving Australia look at the main ports up here all the cargo ports cargo vessel updated by satellite there's a tanker it's coming from Victoria cargo going to and from now the biggest concern is what's happening in China now there have been some reports on social media of all of the tankers just sitting out the front and waiting at the harbor of Singapore but apparently that's actually just pretty normal for the harbor there now if you'd like to get some more up-to-date information on just where all the shipping is have a look I'll link to this in the pinned comments below you can see here let's look at what's going on around Hong Kong right now I mean bloody bloody oh you can look at just the amount of shipping there we can click on it and depending on what it is you can see you know they've got a picture of the ship a Chinese bulk carrier uh, where it's going its status at anchor and uh, we can click on some other ones just to get an understanding of it but you can see I mean look at how much shipping look at how much shipping once it loads up again is at anchor out the front of Hong Kong guys now that seems like a lot perhaps it's normal perhaps it's normal I doubt it judging by what else we've seen look at everything that's at anchor in here so let's jump back to this article and this is from World Maritime News and this is from the Sea Intelligence Report now they provide monthly reports on shipping and well carriers revenue has been pushed to a 1.9 billion dollar US loss just because of these issues because of the recent virus issue affecting trade and that's going to as we'll see in a, another video I'll do sh shortages are flowing through to the Australian economy and not just the toilet paper meme of everyone running out and buying it but in construction and development where they're getting shortages of building materials so let's have a look the impact of the virus outbreak on container shipping continues to grow albeit at a slower pace Copenhagen-based Sea Intelligence said in its weekly analytical report that a global volume loss due to the virus impact had reached 1.9 million TEU amid blanking of sales by global carriers. Now, I don't know what TEU means, so I had to look it up on Google. And I'll share that with you all now because you may not be... I think ship spotters is a thing I'm learning that people are as well. So TEU stands for 20 foot equivalent unit, which can be used to measure a ship's cargo carrying capacity. The dimensions of one TEU are equal to that of a standard 20 foot shipping container, 20 feet long, eight feet tall, and uh, usually nine to 11 pallets are able to fit in one TEU. So they're talking about 1.9 million 20 foot shipping containers amid blanking sailing. By global carriers that seems like a fair bit carriers are blanking sailing sailings as a way of dealing with the cargo volume slump caused by the coronavirus outbreak break originating originating sorry from china and the closure of manufacturing plants in the country 
as a precautionary measure amid at curbing the outbreak, aimed at curbing the outbreak, sorry. So here we go, blank sailings for Trans-Pacific. And these are, you know, as of week four, and these are as of week nine. You can see they're going up, guys. At a rough average freight rate of US $1,000 per TEU, this equals to a revenue loss of 1.9 billion for the carriers. The number of blank sailings in weeks 5 to 15 of 2020 on the Trans-Pacific has increased to 111, of which 48 have been blanked due to the virus and the remainder due to normal Chinese New Year capacity management. On Asia Europe, the number of blank sailings has increased to 75, of which 29 are due to the virus, the intelligence provider said. We can see here. For a more positive angle, we appear to be seeing a stabilization. Even though the carriers have announced seven more blank sailings over the past week, which corresponds to an additional 7% removal of capacity, the pace of new blank sailings has clearly declined, suggesting a belief from the carriers that volumes will slowly be brought back to normal levels. The bulk of the blank sailings were announced during weeks 7 and 8, Alan Murphy CEO of Sea Intelligence said. Now, one thing we have to realize, even if capacity switches back on and uh, trade and shipment continues, there will be a delay. There will be a delay. We looked at, uh, at you know, rumors from manufacturers in the United States in a previous video where he was sharing it on Reddit, just some of the delays for this furniture company that was having there. We saw here in Australia, Ishka, that knickknacks brand, that was devastated because there was a one month delay during the Christmas period. So this, however, does not mean the ripple effects are over. Far from it. We've already outlined in the past week how, weeks how this will impact the round trip dynamics and create shortages of both vessel capacity and equipment availability. Carriers are already pushing rate increases on account of this. And for some bulk haul shippers, the coming weeks might be, well, a matter of whether they can get their cargo moved at all, almost irrespective of the price they're willing to pay. The capacity management measures have ensured freight rates remain on the same levels for now, starving off a feared financial crisis like rate implosion. Furthermore, there were fears that should the situation get prolonged, that aside from blanking of sailings, carriers would have to resort to heavier capacity reduction measures such as idling of ships and demolitions. This might not be the case as there are signs that cargo flow situated at coastal ports in China is normalizing as manufacturing plants start to reopen. And we'll have a look at that, that article as well from the same publisher. And what we'll do is we'll also jump to marine traffic right now and we'll have a look at, you can see here at China, if it's starting to normalize guys i mean look at all the all the, the shipping along the chinese coast i think it's coming in and out of taiwan as well we go ship types we'll turn up oh well we'll zoom out a bit you can see just out of interest it's playing with this we've got the cargo vessels we'll turn off the tankers we'll turn off the tugs and the pleasure craft and the aids and the unspecified ships and we'll just look at all of the different fishing fleets around around the world here you go look, look what's coming out here from alaska here we go japan where's australia's fishing fleet guys wow it's not really that impressive is it what does that tell you about our our uh, what is it rock oysters along western australia guys that's dead isn't it we've got some over here fishing right out in the middle but we'll jump back here and we'll have a look at the tankers and cargo vessels let's we'll zoom into china and you i mean you can see that there's there's a reason why everyone is worried about what's happening in china because just the scale and size of global trade on them so let's jump back here and we'll have a look at this article that it's looking like it is starting to stabilize 
So, cargo flows easing up at China's major coastal ports. Cargo flows at the major coastal ports in China is beginning to normalize, and business operations have now entered the recovery phase. French container shipping major CM, CMA CGM said in an advisory on the virus impact. And informed, and infor, as informed, manufacturing activities in mainland China are gradually picking up, and more port workers and truck drivers are returning to their ports. The news comes amid declining numbers of new cases of the virus infection in China. As such, the World Health Organization has proposed careful monitoring of the phase lifting on the current restrictions on movement and public gathering. The lifting of quarantine measures is beginning with the return of workers and migrant labor, followed by the eventual reopening of schools and lifting other measures. The CACGM group strives to better support our customers as their business activities recover without compromising the health and well-being of our staff and partners in China. Starting from the 2nd of March 2020, alternative teams of employees will be deployed at our offices at different work schedules. Employees working from home during designated hours will continue to provide services on a remote basis, the company said. CMA, CGM Group, remains fully committed to complying with any regulatory requirements and policies aimed at curbing the spread of the virus. All the Chinese ports apart from Wuhan have remained open during the outbreak. However, they have been operating at reduced capacity amid staff shortages arising from travel restrictions and quarantine measures. Among the, uh, the main quarantine measures were factory closures, which resulted in a decrease of container size exports out of China. As a result, carriers resorted to blanking of sailings to deal with the lower demand. The outbreak resulted in reefer shipments being diverted and relocated amid a shortage of reefer plugs on shores at certain Chinese ports, preliminary Shanghai, Tianjin, Ningboi terminals. According to the latest update from the WHO, globally there have been 88,000 cases of the virus with 80,000 confirmed cases in China, outside of China, China about 8-7. In particular, there have been sudden increases in Italy, Iran, Korea, which the WHO describes as deeply concerning. And they go into the other cases here. So, the question is, even if, even if the flow of cargo is returning to normal, from the Chinese ports. There will be a delay. There will definitely be a delay. And it's going to be harder to access materials. And here in Australia, because we are definitely, and I'll bring up the OECD Observatory of Economic Complexity, we are definitely a nation that is importing a lot of products. Our economy isn't very advanced. We're not very complex with regards to what we're producing. And the origin for a large portion of those at the biggest is China. And delays in shipping there can have flow on effects to our economy here in Australia, like I've said. And then the question is, the other question is, do we trust the news that's coming out of China? Well, why don't you let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan, there are a few ways you can help the channel. You can support the channel by sharing the videos, getting it out there helping people discover the channel. You can support us on Patreon for a monthly fee or joining the channel here on YouTube. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon and eBay for your consumer purchases or independent reserve and KuCoin for your crypto trading. We sell merch at the Heiser's website. Find it in the pinned comments, pocket squares. And thank you to the viewer who bought one yesterday. I'm about to send off your package. And finally, we have PayPal for those of you that want to donate that way. Thank you all very much, guys. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.